pretty excited to see some animals like today. Woo! I think we can do a little bit better than that. Let's Woo! Are you excited to see some animals? Look, look at this view, Tata, look at this. As we cross look at that, look the down there, look at that. Rocks over here, we will be transported into Asia as if by magic. Asia, you remember Asia, right? The bird deer species, and we're going to begin to see that deer diversity right here in our very first meadow. No, that's Kanha Meadow. Here in Kanha Meadow, we have three different species of deer, one species oh, of look at that, little. Little to go around. Oh, peacocks. Ah, what a breeze. Yeah, it does look like most of our deer and antelope are going to be on the other end of their field today. So we're going to wrap around and catch up to <laughs> so those guys very, very Get shortly. But in the meantime, we're going to listen to our keeper, Michelle, tell us just a little bit about the Kanha Meadow. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm part of the Wild Asia Keeper Team. We call this area Kanha Meadow, where we care for about 40 Barasinga deer, 15 Axis deer, 10 Black Buck, and a pair of Munchak. We start our day by checking on all the animals, making sure they are healthy, behaving normally, and safe. Sometimes, fawns and calves are born overnight. Newborns are given a neonatal exam, which includes weighing, vaccination, and tagging for identification purposes. While the animals are in the meadow, we prepare their nighttime holding areas so that they have a safe and clean place to spend the night. And like she said, we're going to catch on up to our Axis deer, our Black Buck antelope, our Barasinga deer, and our brand new deer here at the Bronx Zoo, the Bactrian deer. Once we wrap around to the other end of the meadow here. However, we're actually going to be catching up to our back train deer right now as they're going to be right down in front of us here. Going to be right down a little bit closer to the train here. Oh, he's all in the bottom. Side now. Tell me when you see it, okay? Oh, okay, that was that. Right. Okay. Look, Sean, look, look. I'm talking about our Mongolian look, ready? wild horses. Look, 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 the wild so horses. Wow, horse. wild horses. horses. They were extinct in nature in the 1960s. <laughs> Everyone, could please stay seated for me? Thank you. Now, as we are getting some good views of these guys right here, you might notice a couple of differences between them and the normal domestic horses we're used to seeing. Some of those being that these guys are a little bit shorter, a little bit stockier, and they are rough and awesome mohawk as opposed to a mane. They're also missing their forelock, which is that piece of hair that covers the front of their foreheads. Now, like I said earlier, they were labeled extinct in nature in the 1960s. However, you could still find them in select zoos across the world. One of those being here at the Bronx Zoo, as we have exhibited these guys since 1902. We've also had over 50 bulls born here at the Bronx Zoo. And now, thanks to successful breeding and conservation efforts by us and many others around the world, we have been able to return these beautiful horses back into their natural habitats. We do only exhibit an all-female herd of Chevalsky horse, so we did just meet all of our lovely ladies back there. However, as we're making our way up this hill, you guys might start to notice that we do like to give our animals lots and lots of room to roam around, play, and graze, as we're just now in the back half of our Mongolian wild horse exhibit. So we are going to listen to Jonathan Slat, our Russia and Northeast Asia coordinator, tell us just a little bit more about our Chevalsky horses. I'm Jonathan Slatt, and I'm the Russia and Northeast Asia Coordinator for the Wildlife Conservation Society. I believe that wildlife has a place on this earth. My job is to find practical solutions that allow people and wildlife to thrive together. Peter Zhabalski's horse went extinct in the wild in the 1960s. And on a recent trip to Kazakhstan, I thought about the ongoing and successful efforts in that country to bring his horses back to the Central Asian steppe. The world needs happy stories. And watch the impossible become possible. We see hope we That's what's happening today. Look at that. 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 Look at that.
brow antler deer. Gower. Now our gower are going to be pretty difficult to miss as they are big, brown, and have amazingly huge horns. They are the largest wild cattle in all of Asia. And you can see them right up front right here. Now keep a very, very close eye on these guys as we do actually have three baby gower with us today. Well, two of our baby gower are just a little over two and a half months old. And the other one is just a little bit over a few days old. A few days old. Now we do also have our brown antler deer here. And those guys yeah. get their name from their very uniquely shaped antlers that look like two eyebrows coming from the front of their foreheads. Now, unfortunately, we won't be able to see those <laughs> eyebrows here today, as every year deer do shed their antlers, and every year they regrow them. So all of our deer here in Asia are currently in the process of regrowing those antlers. See the little baby in the back? Yeah. Now our gower can grow to a very, very impressive size of weighing about 2,000 pounds, standing at 6 feet high and 10 feet long. See? That size makes it very, very easy for them to defend themselves against almost any kind of predator they may face in the wild, including a tiger, which we're going to see next. We're going to see a tiger. We're going to see a tiger. As we do make our way on up to our tiger exhibit here, you might notice you're hearing some sounds coming from the concrete jungle behind us as opposed to the Asian one in front of us. <laughs> now it's very easy to forget that the Bronx Zoo is situated in the heart of an urban area we come from, the Bronx River Parkway right behind us. But that's exactly why we built this wooden fence right here. It was put up to keep those loud noises out and away from our tigers to make them feel safer and more at home. Now, tigers are solitary animals, so we will only be seeing one on exhibit today. I would like to remind everyone to stay seated as we do so, as we're just now coming over at the top of our tiger exhibit. I'll go down the hill. Now, tiger stripes do make it very, very easy for them to blend into their surroundings. So we're going to see if we can find her here today. Tiger on the lookout for her name is Suhana. Let's see if we can find a tiger. Right in front. Oh, there she is. She's laying down. You can kind of see her twirl. Right there. Towards the right hand side. She's going to be laying down right in front. She's one of the smaller tigers we exhibit in here in Wild Asia. However, her colors are a lot more vibrant than our Siberian tigers we also have here in Asia. Now, tigers in the wild can eat up to 40 pounds of meat in one sitting, which is roughly 160 hamburgers. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I know I would be very, very full if I had that much food. And so are tigers in the wild, as they do actually take several days to eat after having that really big feast. It was like under the gate. Right, now, as we were saying goodbye to Suhana back there, we're going to be entering the back of our Gower and Brow Antler Deer Field, where we're going to get a little bit of a closer view of our Gower right up here. Oh, so Charlotte, look! On the top of the hill here. Wow. As it does get later, they make their way right closer there. and closer down to the edge of the hill here, ready to be left back inside for the night. We're also entering the back of our Kanha Meadow where we started today's journey at. We're going to see if we can find these other deer and antelope here. If you look along the left hand fence line, you see those golden honey colored deer. Those guys are Pharisinga deer. Put against the right hand fence line right over here, you see those guys with these spots on them? Those guys are Axis deer. But if you look right in front of that fallen tree log, there's one guy lying down back there that has a black back and a white belly and some squiggly horns. That guy is one of our black buck antelope. Our black buck and antelope are sexually dimorphic, meaning the males and females look like two completely different species. While our axis deer are one of the few deer in existence who do get to keep their spots for life. Most other deer will grow out of them. But as we do wrap around this bend here, we're going to be approaching a bamboo thicket. That bamboo thicket is home to our Fabarusa. Fabarusa means pig deer in the Malay language, which is quite fitting considering they do look like a pig, but they have tusks that can resemble antlers. And in our first field here, we have Kenneth, he, or sorry, we have Linus right in front of us here. Oh, look at him. And in our second field, I'm not quite sure if we have anybody out in our second field right now. 
doesn't really look like we got anybody out here with us in our second field. Now these guys are a dark gray in color and they're a little bit smaller, so they are sometimes harder to spot. However, if you had any trouble finding those guys, don't worry, because you'll have no trouble spotting our next animal on the tour. The largest oh, land yeah. mammal, our Asian elephant. Whoa, this elephant is huge! Look, look! The lovely lady we're going to be meeting in our first field here is Miss Happy. Look, Charlotte, look, Charlotte, right there, look. Look, Charlotte. And in our second field, we're going to be meeting Miss Patty. Look, Charlotte. Look, Charlotte, look at the Say, I don't drink water. Now we take very, very good care of our elephants here as they do receive weekly pedicures and baths. Can I become an elephant? Yeah, right. Now you might have noticed that they did not have tusks, and that's because they are Asian elephants, and only the male Asian elephants will grow tusks, whereas the females will not. Unlike the African elephant, where both the males and the females will grow tusks. But as we say goodbye to our golden girls back there, we're going to be saying hello to Miss Penny. Oh, look, she's one of our Indian rhinoceros, and she's walking up the little, the middle right over here. Hi. She has one. Now, first thing you notice about Miss Penny here is that she will have some white stuff on her face whenever you get to see her face here. And that white stuff is actually sunscreen, as Penny's very sensitive girl. The neighbors have to put sunscreen on her face every morning before they bring her outside. You might also notice that she is mostly covered in mud. And that's because rhinos often coat themselves in mud to protect their skin from the sun and from insects. Because even though rhinos do look like they are armor plated, it couldn't be further from the truth, as it's just the way their skin folds over. So they may seem tough, but they're actually quite sensitive. Charlie's here? Charlie's here. She is an Indian rhinoceros, which means she does only have one horn, as opposed to the southern white rhinos over in the zoo center who do have two horns. Over there, they are more of a herding animal as well, so you might see them in a group. Whereas over here, Penny is similar to our tigers in the fact that she is solitary. Now we've had over 11 baby rhinos born here at the Bronx Zoo, and our mama rhinos do remain pregnant for up to 16 months, giving birth to a baby weighing up to 100 pounds. Yikes. <laughs> now mud wallow right in the center was put there when we opened our rhino exhibit here in Wild Asia, that has been progressively made bigger by our rhinos stomping around in it. Now we are going to listen to just a little bit more about some of the different rhino species we do like to try and help save out in the wild. The rhinos you see here are Indian rhinos. We work with habitats all over the world that are homes to rhinos. Here is a note from our field office in Sumatra, and Ulan, who works with the Sumatran rhino. Sumatran rhinos are the smallest of the world's rhinos, and they are considered critically endangered. My name is Ulan Kusperi, and I'm the Species Conservation Specialist for WCS Indonesia Program. We carried out an island-wide survey of the last wild population of Sumatran rhinoceros in Indonesia. With so many unknowns on how to manage Sumatran rhinos in the wild or captivity, our studies showed definitively that we must protect them at source. The cost of doing nothing could be the extinction of the species. And I can't imagine that. Now, as you guys might have noticed, we have entered our next Look. area here, which is home to our sandbar deer, which are going to be the dark chocolatey brown guys with the antlers here. And our Neil Guy Antelope, which are going to be these lighter tan guys. Now, our sandbar deer might also look like they're going just a little bit bald, and that's because they kind of are, as they've shed their winter coats and they're regrowing their summer coats. They're also in the process of regrowing those antlers, just like the rest of our deer here in Asia. So you might see some stubs, spikes, or even halfway grown in antlers. 
Charlotte. Hi, 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 Charlotte.
left. If you're in the first five cars, your exits to your right. If you're in the last two cars, your exits to your left. And if you're in lucky car number B6, your exit is straight ahead of you. Now, on behalf of the Bronx Zoo and the Wildlife Conservation Society, I'd like to thank you all so, so much for joining us here today. I hope that you enjoyed the tour, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day here at the beautiful Bronx Zoo or wherever else your day may take you. And I hope to see you all again sometime soon. you feel